everyone. Uh, my name is Nasimuddin. I'm a uh, professor at the uh, University of Alabama, Birmingham. Uh, we'll be making our presentation on the STRIDE project, uh, Flyby Image Processing for Real-Time Congestion Mitigation. I will begin the presentation and I'll be joined by my student, Abdulaziz, uh, from a different location, which is the reality of today. And uh, I'm gonna have a, uh, my co-PI of this project, actually is Professor Billy Williams of North Carolina State University, and who is a student, Shuhaib Samande. They also contributed to this presentation. Uh, again, uh, see. So, so as a quick introduction that uh, when we say about flyby image processing, actually it's about adaptive signal control technology, and which many of you are familiar with that uh, uses the sensor and the centralized computing software that adjust the traffic signal time in real time to optimize the flow, traffic flow. So especially during you know, crashes, special events, weather, and many other congestion time. So this uh, CT system actually continuously update the signal time it improved the travel time, it reduced the congestion, it, you know, and it has a effectiveness of signal timing is much better. It accommodates all kinds of traffic demand. So this is great. And that has been really uh, very much a focus of research and implementation. But the problem is this ACT system is very expensive. It can go up to as high as 250K per intersection and with the annual operating cost up to $25,000 a year. So very expensive. And the reason actually is you need so much of the software and the hardware as you see in these pictures. It needs the controllers, it needs a lot of equipment outside, it needs uh, uh, infrastructures to carry the data, transmit the data. So it has a lot of hardware and software involvement for each intersections. That is the reason for the cost going up that much. So the solution that we really looking into is this. Here, uh, instead of implementing a hardware software system, every intersection, we're gonna have a drone taking over uh, those intersections and they collect the image as you see here. And this uh, drone has a ability to attach itself to its structures and then keep on uh, looking at the vehicle stream on the road real time. And then based on that, it can predict uh, the you know, estimated time of congestion. And then accordingly alert the system, uh, you know, or change the intersection timing to accommodate those. Uh, so the way it works actually is really a uh, same as city system, except that we are calling it out as a flyby because instead of having a fixed hardware software installation at every intersections, it's just a drone flying over the intersections and it really provide a much lower cost means of monitoring the traffic conditions without any extensive in-place network of sensing in the intersections. And it can operate in the both GPS and, and GPS denied environment and it can capture high resolution images and data as you'll see from the onboard sensors, and it can actually transmit data over two to three kilometers. So it really a workable solutions. And this is how it works. As you can see that uh, the drones are attached in a different locations, and then uh, it looking down, and then as it collect the data, it has those data results from the simulation software on board, and it matches the data with the data in the system to estimate, you know, is it a normal operations or congestion is being approached. So the advantage is obvious that uh, you are replacing all the camera and the detectors in a study in every intersection. You don't have to do it anymore. A drone is gonna fly over and do it. And then the second is like, uh, is, uh, is not only, you know, for off peak hour, weekend and night when you don't need it, you don't need to do any of those. 
you can only focus on implementing the system when in the peak period of time or when you have a situation of crash, construction, weather, or special events. And also like when you see something happening in the main road or highway, and you need to track the diverted traffic, you can allow this system to really putting a new timing plan in the intersections. And also it can be used during the paving operations or maintenance, you know, during the routine time or at construction challenges or disabled vehicles and all the lane closures, the drone can come in and take it over. If drone at the same time, when it's managing the traffic and the congestion, it can also detect the crashes, disabled vehicle and the debris in the same time. And uh, to give you also accurate pedestrian volumes uh, as you do it. So the benefit actually is numerous over and above managing the intersection. So how does it work? So it has really the two part, a traffic simulation part where we run a traffic simulations to establish the relation between the traffic features and expected time of congestion that needs to be occurred. So we run those simulations and we establish those parameters responsible for the congestion. The second part of the puzzle is actually as after we done the simulation of the intersections, we install our, with the drone can fly over the intersections and then uh, it can look for those parameters, including speed, distance between the car, number of vehicles. Then it kind of compare this information with the information that it has from the simulation so that it can estimate the time of congestion as it's approaching. Uh, so in the simulation then has a number of uh, involvement. In each simulations, we try to uh, model the, the, the congestion scenarios uh, where we you know, look into the, the vehicle intersection coefficient, car following, the lane changing coefficient as you'll see in later slides. And we also you know, look in the simulation by changing the input values you know, and the corresponding time of the congestions. And then we repeat this process for a large number of cases so that we have enough database to go to the next step, to develop a simplified model to describe the relation between the traffic and expected time of conditions. And this model actually allows to predict conditions you know, with a very limited computing capability. You don't need very high end uh, sophisticated software. It's a very simplified feature extraction that can do the job. So in the real-time feature detections, once your simulation is done, it has a two features. One is really the parching mechanism, how the drone is going to be parched. As you notice, like here in this case, this is a Stanford uh, contribution, actually, how the drone is attaching vertically on the roof. And then you can see how the drone is attaching vertically to the wall. So, and then as it does, it keep on looking down to the street and to pick up those informations. Then once you collect the data, then we also have another system, you're going to notice later on, that how we use a faster region convolution neural network to identify the cars and the vehicles and then distance between them. So in our system, for our project, we developed our own parching mechanisms, you know, and that this is the drone we are using. It has an accelerometer inside it and it can attach to both steel and concrete structures. And the accelerometer that you have inside is very like a coin size, and uh, it has electromagnet to attach itself. So you see how the drone kind of attach itself vertically against the gravity. And then it can it release itself uh, when it's needed. And as you see some of the real life implementation at our campus, how the drone fly out and attach itself in the location of the intersections. So it's a different intersection, three different intersections and three different locations, drone could fly over and attach itself. And again, this is like system from the Stanford, as I mentioned to you. And so these are much more sophisticated than what the system we use. So now I'm gonna transfer it to the Abdelaziz. He's gonna talk about how He's going to use those neural network to detect the vehicles and then how he's going to run the simulations to estimate the features and then how we're going to combine them together to 
estimate the congestion time. So Abdullah, this is your screen. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Dean. Um, now I will talk about um, the real-time traffic feature detection. How can we uh, 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 monitor the traffic and get the information we need uh, first? I will talk about the description of the problem itself and the assumptions and formula that uh, we used uh, in this detection. I'll talk about the calibration of the camera of the drone and uh, lens. Then I'll take the main, the main part would be about uh, using UL version 3 to detect the vehicles and how we used GPU to accelerate this detection. Then I'll talk about UL uh, version 4 and um, last step is how to detect the congestion is itself. And finally, it will be as a program, flow chart, and the summary and conclusion. First, uh, as uh, Dr. Dean said, uh, the traffic management is a uh, key to handle and solve this uh, traffic problems. Uh, we can use drones or fixed cameras or uh, whatever is possible and that's available for this location to uh, monitor the birds that we are studying. Um, we get some information from these cameras uh, in the form of uh, videos. Then we took these videos and uh, evaluate the condition of the traffics depending on the information we get from them. Uh, first, uh, the assumptions that we made uh, that the camera is not moving, so after the drone attached itself is fixed, uh, the image uh, received inside this camera on a flat surface with the fin of the camera, and the real scene which the tree is a flat ground, so there shouldn't be no bumps or dips, just a flat ground. Here, uh, this geometry explains this. We have this flat ground, this observed area, and we have up there the camera film. Uh, using this geometry, uh, we uh, deducted these uh, two formulas. This formula relates the real coordinates on the main street to the coordinates on the images captured by uh, the camera. Here in these two formulas, x, y are the estimated coordinates of the specific real point, and h and v are the location of this point on the image in pixels. Um, the other symbols, a, b, t, and little, and c1 to c6 are coefficients in this equation, but a, b, t, and z are four independent coefficients while the other uh, six coefficients uh, depend on three independent coefficients. So we have total of seven coefficients that we need to get so we can relate between the coordinates of the image to the real coordinates. So as we have seven uh, coefficients, we need seven real inputs and their corresponding measurements from the image and from the real scene to determine them. Uh, the minimum input that we are using are six real lenses on the street and one of these lenses must have a known directions. So we need seven informations. We have six lenses and one direction. This direction can be the traffic direction or the direction perpendicular to it. The other uh, alternative is to use five real lenses but we must have two of them in two perpendicular direction. That one is the direction of the traffic and the other one is perpendicular to it. So a uh, C-sharp program was made to do this calibration. To illustrate these uh, sets of uh, inputs, let's see for example this one. Here we have this red line that is perpendicular to the traffic and this is this one, we have its lens and we define it as perpendicular. We have this green line that is in the uh, direction of the traffic, this one, and we can have more than one, but one is the minimum. And we have this blue lines that doesn't have a specific direction, but we know their lengths. So we have one perpendicular with its length, one in traffic with its length, and others with only lenses. 
other set is using one in the direction, this green one, for example, direction of the traffic, and other lines with no direction, these blue lines. And as I said before, if it's too perpendicular, it's not a problem, the minimum is one. Um, and this is another one, that one direction, and all the others with no direction, but we know the length of all these lines. Um, here it's not calibrated. After we get all the information we need, the seven or more information we need, we can press this calibrate and it, using trial and error, it will try to get the seven coefficients that in the formula. Then the formula is calibrated and we can use this formula to get the location of any points on the street from its location on the captured image. The next part is about defining lanes. Because in traffic, we have to uh, separate the flow of cars. Each lane must be monitored separately. So uh, we define the edges of each lane by selecting two points each lane, just like any normal line. And of course, uh, the, these two points should be as far as possible from each other to achieve good accuracy. Uh, and also we add uh, something that we add a tolerance to these lanes to limit detecting uh, far areas as the camera is more accurate when it's uh, monitoring a closed area. If it's looking at the horizon, it will not get uh, an accurate uh, estimation of distances and speeds. And this will be illustrated in the next two slides. Here uh, I defined these five edges to separate the four lanes of this street. Uh, and I hear the tolerance was 10 centimeter per pixel. So it is here the far pixels, the farthest pixels, each one uh, is uh, corresponding to 10 centimeters. If I want a higher precision, for example, here, uh, one inch per pixel, which is lower, here the camera will just monitor uh, smaller area because the farthest area will not be uh, compatible with this uh, accuracy that I need. So after I define the lane, I can start detecting the vehicle using Yellow Version 3. But first, let's introduce Yellow Version 3. It's a technique used to detect vehicles with a good uh, accuracy and uh, reasonable time. Uh, YOL is uh, stand for you only look once. Uh, it's a kind of network, but it uses a single network to the full image. Simply let's assume that we have image. It's divided in a grid of uh, small squares. Then uh, each grid, uh, the network predict bounding boxes for us inside this image and give probabilities for each region. Yeah, this is the same as the dogs, the bicycles, the car, and so on for 20, 20%, 30%, and like this. And after this, the bounding box are weighted by these probabilities and the highest probability is given. So for example, okay, this is a dog for 80%, this is a bicycle for 70%, this is a car for 60%, and so on. Uh, this method, uh, applies uh, the model or the network to the image uh, once, but other methods uh, apply their model at multiple locations and scales and give high scoring vision for images to detect. So this technique is conserved faster than uh, usual convolution uh, neural networks. It's uh, uh, considered as 1,000 times faster than RCNN and 10 times faster than fast RCNN. So that's why we adopted it in our situation that we need a um, faster detection process. Uh, when a vehicle is detected and by using the previously calibrated uh, formula, we can determine the location and speed uh, of the vehicle then we display the location and speed of the vehicle on the video. And as we divided the scene to lanes, the vehicles can be separated each vehicle on each lane. So we can get back to back or front to front 
distances between any two successive vehicles in each lane. Here, for example, we we'll start monitoring. Uh, here, the, the six cars are uh, captured and detected as cars. Here, for example, the six car is this car in lane three, and its location is 42.5 meter, and its speed is 12.6 meter per second. And the same goes for all other vehicles. Um, of course, we can use other uh, units. For example, here it's uh, yard per minute. And we can uh, hide the lanes if you want. And here it's a kilometer per hour. So we can use any units depending on the preferences of the user. And here in my middle hour. Okay, now we have to take the car, but we still have a problem. Uh, we need faster detection. We need it to be a real time. So uh, we started by training two new neural network with only five desired classes. This car, bus, truck, motorbike, and bicycle. Because the original neural network has uh, 80 classes that is detecting traffic signs, detects humans, dogs, cats, and many things. So if we reduced the design the class from 80 to 5, it can give uh, more and more speed. Uh, why two different models? Because they have two options. We can uh, train a model to be full model with five layers of neural network, or it can uh, be trained with only three to be less accurate, but more uh, faster. That we will see when we compare the performance of each network. So both models were faster, but the efficiency is in question. Uh, two videos were tested. The first one is low resolution, 640 by 480 pixels. The other was 1280 by 720. But both videos were 30 frames per second. Okay, by uh, look at the efficiency of both of them, we see that the original uh, YOLO network was almost 100%, it was detecting almost all cars, that we see in the next video. Why the other two trained network was less than this? For example, the full network was 50 to less than 70, and the trained tiny one with only three layers was less than 30 and less than 40 for the high resolution video. Here, for example, if you looked at this, to the left is the full uh, network, and to the right is the uh, trained one. Here we can sometimes the trained one uh, skips some cars, which causes a problem in efficiency. This is a high resolution video. And the is a low resolution video. We see that more cars are missed for our trained. Uh, network. So we consider this as a problem that we don't want to lose anything from the traffic because it will affect the accuracy of uh, our judgment. So we thought about trying to solve this problem in other way. Um, as we uh, was detecting using uh, first uh, as um, ordinary Intel Core uh, i5, the detecting uh, time for a single frame using the original euro, it was about five seconds. But the trained full network, it was half the time, 2.5. And the tiny network, it was 10% of the full, almost 10%. So now we have uh, a situation. Can we sacrifice part of the uh, accuracy in exchange of the speed? or can we have another solution. Um, by using a stronger processor into the Xeon E5-2006-8 version 3, which have 12 cores instead of 4 cores, the time uh, was reduced to 1.3 for the first two trained full network, and to the tiny 2.13. We see here that the efficiency uh, ratio is higher for the 
full network is it's about its fourth while for the tiny it's only and the, for the train is only its half so increasing the course can be the solution if you want uh, if you don't want to lose the accuracy of detection so we thought about using gpu to accelerate detection uh, the real-time detection requires 3 millisecond per frame and as we see here, that increase the number of processing cores lead to lower detection time. So the GPU usually has higher number of smaller cores than the ordinary CPU processors. These cores can process parallel uh, processing. So uh, we thought about using CUDA C++ or NVIDIA GPU cards to enhance the performance and speed of detection. Uh, as I was using originally a C-sharp program, so I made a dynamic uh, link library DLL using C++ and I used this DLL inside the original C-sharp program. I didn't want to make the whole program in C++. Now let's see the results. I used an uh, ordinary uh, NVIDIA GeForce uh, 930M which have 300. 84 cores and we see that the results were very very uh, better for the original uh, euro it's about 0 0.46 to 0 0.48 seconds for a frame of course it's not the desired speed but we are approaching it the trend for network is 0 0.37 to 0.4 and the tiny didn't was it affecting that much with 0.1 to 0.12 because anyway it has already reached its limit for the uh, cpu it can't be enhanced anymore. So it's just about using an ordinary or uh, medium uh, card. What if you used a stronger one? So uh, now we are currently testing using a stronger card. It's called Tesla B100. It has ten almost 10 times the cores than the original one. And we believe that it will uh, enable us to achieve the required uh, time that we need. Now about Euro version 4, it was just released a few weeks ago and it's said by the developers that it will be more efficient. So we are considering using it. It could improve the speed more and more and uh, make us closer to the performance that we require. Now as we detected the cards, we look at the congestion itself. Congestion itself is estimated from the position of the observed vehicles. Uh, it's defined by exceeding the road capacity and it can be recognized when we see a high vehicular density and the vehicular speeds are lower than the desired speed for this road. When a certain limit of vehicle per mile for each lane is reached, then we consider this at congested. This limit uh, was taken as 45 vehicle per mile or 28 vehicle per kilometer for our case. Here uh, we'll talk about this chart describing uh, this criteria that we choose. We have there uh, the flow rate in the vehicle per hour and here the speed of the, of the uh, traffic. Uh, if we, for example, select 65 mile per hour, we see that when we have 500 vehicle per hour passing, the speed will be the same. Uh, we will have about 7.7 .7 vehicle per mile. The distance between vehicles from vehicle to vehicle, center to center of vehicle is about 608 feet. And the time required for a vehicle to catch uh, the vehicle in front of it, if it stopped uh, suddenly, is would be 10 seconds, so depending on this speed and this distance. If the number increased to 100, uh, okay, it will be 15.4 vehicle per mile, uh, uh, 340 feet, 5 seconds from vehicle to vehicle. But when we reach once, uh, 1500, um, the distance between vehicles was getting too close. It will be only about 200 feet. And the time for uh, between vehicles will be about 3.5 seconds only. Now the vehicle are trying uh, to get closer to each other and it could be a problem. As the number increased to 2,000 vehicle per hour, the vehicles will start 
to slow down from 65 to 60 that's to keep safe distance between vehicles as uh, uh, distance would be 158 if they keep their original speed the time uh, between vehicles will be dangerous finally when we reach the limit that you put is 45 kilo per hour yeah per mile sorry it will be 117 feet only between two any two successive vehicles and the speed will drop to 52 miles per hour and that's what we consider the congestion limit we see that the, according to this speed and this distance the time between a vehicle and the uh, other vehicle before or after it will be about 2.2 seconds only so this distance uh, is the minimum distance that can achieve the safe trailing distance between vehicles that's called the two second rule this means that the distance from the front of my car to the end of the uh, the front uh, car should uh, should be less than two seconds uh, and this considers the congestion limit so here if we are in this zone that we have high speed for uh, a certain number of vehicles we have no congestion but of uh, any number we have low speed this is the congestion limit that we trying to avoid now for each lane we take it individually we get the number of vehicle uh, in this lane using the camera and uh, detection we uh, presented previously this number is n we get the distance between the first and the last car in this observed area d and the vehicular density bd uh, is estimated using this formula n minus one over d in the case of results of only one car the vehicle density would be considered to equal one okay let's see here we have seen I have six cars as the first lane has zero uh, vehicles so there is, of course there's no congestion for the second uh, lane we have two cars it looks here close and uh, the number of vehicle per kilometer is 42 this exceeds the limit we uh, mentioned before this is 28 uh, vehicle per kilometer so we consider this as congestion the same goes for the fourth lane it's uh, 86 vehicle per kilometer and also is congested but for the third lane it's only 27.29 so it's lower than the limit 28 so we consider this as no congestion the same good here it's a vehicle per mile so the first one is zero the second one is for, uh, 54 it's congested and here second one it's one because this car uh, has uh, get away from the intersection we are observing we only consider the car inside the observed area as we said before this is the tolerance we set so we have no congestion in three or in four and here's another example here's one and here's two cars but they are far very far apart so it's only 41 vehicles with mine so there is no congestion in this one here to summarize how the program work first it takes the uh, input calibration distances the seven inputs we mentioned it calibrate to get the coefficients the lanes are selected and the tolerance uh, is selected then the program define the lanes each the area of each lanes uh, the trained yulu uh, version 3 network is loaded we start the monitoring from the video then the vehicles are detected, assigned to lanes, the estimated location and velocity of each car, each vehicle, and the next location of each car is predicted. Then uh, the program display the location and velocity of each car in each lane. Then it count vehicles and continues the dis uh, calculate the distance between the first and last car in each lane and evaluate the vehicle density and finally it displays the congestion condition. 
After this, uh, it check if the stream ended, the video stopped. If yes, it ends. If no, it goes to the next frame and continue the process. So the results we have that we can calibrate the camera to uh, estimate the location from the image, but we have to do this using real measurements from the scene. The calibrated camera can be used to detect the vehicle using, using Google version 3 and estimate the location with uh, good accuracy. Uh, we can use different types of network depending on the required uh, efficiency. If we love the efficiency, more we will use the full network. If we can sacrifice part of it, we can use the tiny one. Uh, and of course, the quality of the camera as uh, video is uh, hi of higher resolution, it will take more time to be processed, but it will get better results even with lower uh, networks, the tiny network. And of course, the available process. So if we have stronger process, processor, we can use uh, stronger networks. And But if we don't, we just have to stick to the tiny network. Uh, and the GPU, as we has displayed, can be used to accelerate the detection. And so the last one, last part, the congestion can be evaluated depending on the distance between the vehicle inside the observed scene. For the future improvement, we are going to look for the Euro version 4. We'll see if it, if it will improve the performance. And we use uh, different types of stronger uh, processors to uh, enhance the performance and minimize the time required for processing each frame. Uh, please don't forget to complete the survey in the chat inbox for the future webinars. Thank you and we are waiting for your questions.